Welcome to my conversation. I keep on saying it's conversations with Deborah, a <laughs> bi-coastal dialogue. Because Deborah and I think of think about uh, you know, many things differently. Think about different matters, but it's amazing how many things we think alike. That's right. Well, it is Friday, the last day uh, of the week for uh, for January, January the 29th of twenty twenty one, and. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm a, a native Californian and moved back to South Carolina, just to give you a little thumbnail, about five and a half years ago. And uh, it's been um, quite an education for me as a, as a native Californian, because it's totally different, obviously, because it is South Carolina, but it's also very much alike, very much like uh, California used to be in the 80s and the 90s. And I'll explain about that in a little bit. But uh, you wanted to know where I was. I'm a little tiny bit late, so I do apologize. Um, but uh, my uh, my dear uh, husband, Michael Fish Fisher, is an artist, and he's been asked uh, because all of the galleries here are pretty well closed. It's uh, obviously with the COVID, and we now have uh, the first new cases of South African COVID, of course, here right. in South Carolina. I heard that. He's being extra careful. But um, we don't have a gallery anymore because for obvious reasons, it doesn't make any sense to, uh, to invite uh, the, the, the problems that the COVID can bring. But um, we were asked to um, do a, uh, a presentation at uh, the Haywood Mall. Now, Haywood Mall is one of the larger malls here in Greenville, South Carolina, which I guess is not saying very much. However, it is a Herb Simon property. And Herb Simon, ironically enough, uh, was a client of, of fishes back when he was a handyman back in Santa Barbara. Wow. Wonderful man, absolutely terrific guy, salt of the earth, normal human being. But here we are going to be displaying uh, uh, as artist of, of, the three, of a three month period of time beginning in mid-February. So we were over there talking with the, uh, the marketing people there. And slowly but surely the malls are starting to come back. And why is that? because people are so sick to death of being cooped up. And with a mall, you can at least socially distance and yet have a little bit of window shopping and at least a, a little semblance of things that's normal. But they're going to, they've offered us um, a display for a three, four month period of time, a 10 by 10 foot wall. And that's gonna be just fabulous because back in Santa Barbara, when uh, I first met Fish, I uh, met him in an art gallery that uh, my late husband, Tom, and I would go to find emerging artists. And uh, I saw it at a what's called a First Friday presentation and was blown away by his art. It's, it's um, urban abstract art, but with a twist. I'll get a chance to show some of the stuff to you in a couple of days. And um, I immediately said, have you got a manager? My soon to be, well, wasn't at the time my husband, but uh, he looked at me and said, what do I need a manager for? And I said, I'm your new manager. So we were able to get anywhere from 15 to 20 shows a month up and down the coast of, of California. And that lasted for quite a period of time, three to four years until we once again decided to make the move back here to, uh, to South Carolina. But it looks like we're going to be at uh, a major um, a mall here, 10 by 10 space. And uh, also the other thing where um, we're doing since people cannot come into uh, locations, we're going to be doing, of all things, digital billboards. We're going to put his artwork up on digital billboards. Wow! Billboards are forty feet long and twenty feet tall. So we're going to we're going to see his artwork. Fishfootage.com is where you can see it. We'll put his artwork up, and it's going to be part of the Beautify Greenville uh, campaign. And various cities will go to. It'll be Beautify Spartanburg, Beautify Charlotte. Uh, uh, beautify a uh, Piedmont, beautify all these various cities. And um, what's interesting about uh, this type of media is it can be instantly changed, obviously, because yeah. it's, it's a billboard. And it's interesting because they have little cameras that actually can see whether people are looking from their automobiles. And in many cases, they can actually record, and they call it the number of eyes, the E-Y-E-S, eyes, so in one of these billboards that we were sitting in front of, because we had a meeting with Lamar Advertising, this particular billboard, 40 feet long, 20 feet high, got per day 2,000 eyeballs looking at it. <laughs> 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 they <track> it. 
but uh, again, I was in advertising in, in uh, New York. Yep. Don't they have uh -huh. the Don't they have the the digital billboards in New York where they can change it and they? Yep. And, and and they also have they don't count it by eyes, but they count the traffic. How many cars yep. pass the billboard? This this is a way you uh, uh, monitorize it. You know they'll they'll yep. sell a billboard because you know a million cars pass it per day or. Because uh, yep. they do that over here in the freeway, but I had a thought. My marketing mind comes into okay, you, and you being on location in the uh, shopping mall. Why not while you're on vacation? When you start, while you're on location, to take okay. your computer with you. All right. And do the show from there. Possibility. Instead of, I mean, right now we have the show from from your lovely house. But sure. why not take it on like what you want to show me is the new south and the people. Why don't you take awesome. it? And all it does is take your all you have to do is take your uh, computer with you. It's not, you know, oh, seven cameras, a lighting director and you, you get, uh, you know, uh, like I have a special light and a microphone. Yeah. And we'll go to the malls. And I think that's a great idea. And in fact, we'd have to do it on a Saturday because that looks like the day they want us to be able to uh, to actually be out there. And we're going to be greeting people at the mall, but also uh, showing them the artwork and, and what have you. And what's and, point, just trying to get people out and about for heaven's sake. Uh, well, wait, wait to more vaccine, like in, in another few months. I know. But because <laughs> it, uh, it can be funny to see all these people with their masks on. But <laughs> but eventually, I'm, I'm thinking about the summertime, if we're doing the planning now with the shopping centers, you bring it out. Uh, you know, you tell the shopping centers that we're having it. They have people you can, you know, oh, oh excuse me, oh, there's Bob. He works for so and so and have yep. him come and sit and talk to him. Wouldn't that be fabulous? I think it'll be, I think it's a good idea. It, it, it's, it was funny. She, uh, um, a young lady, probably maybe 30, 35 years old, she's only been on the job since September. And what I like about that energy is that she is looking at different ways of, of piquing people's interest and uh, capitalizing on this whole COVID situation, because once again, everybody being cooped up, how do you get people into the mall? Well, fortunately, malls, especially here, are gigantic. So there's plenty of opportunity to keep the social distancing and the masks, et cetera, et cetera. So um, it's, it's interesting how things are really evolving. No thanks to the China virus, but nonetheless, uh, we're adapting as we do, as we all do. Yeah, well, I, I think what's going to uh, uh, basically, I don't know about mass and separation, but I think things are going to start returning more to normal or the new normal when uh, people are vaccinated. I mean, I hope no, so. I do, I, have, you, have you got your vaccination date yet? No, not yet. I'm a member. I, I don't know if I mentioned I'm a member of Kaiser Permanente and, and uh, right. they told, they're supposed to call me up. Uh, they said between three and five days to be put on the waiting list. Okay, Fish is getting his on uh, February the 3rd, and uh, since I'm a little younger than he is, I still have to wait. So, But he gets the first one on February the 3rd, and then uh, about three weeks, four weeks later, he'll get the second shot. They're saying at this point right now, they don't know whether he will be able to eliminate the mask and the social distancing. And frankly, I told him, listen, I can't afford to, <laughs> to lose a second husband. Yeah. <laughs> really can't. So please keep wearing your mask and and social distance and, and all oh, of yeah, that. Yeah, until, until we get sort of like the herd uh, yeah. immunity. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, right now, I don't, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, at the, I'm at the first stage where they say, you're how old? I don't believe it. And you're still living. I know. <laughs> but everybody, the, the older you get, the more you start feeling old when people that you know that you listen to as a child, that they're, they're all passing away. Like this week alone, uh, oh. Cicely Tyson. Has know, passed away, a uh, Chorus Leachman. I know. I mean, of course, Sicily was ninety six. Chorus is ninety five, and then a uh, 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 old buddy. It wasn't a buddy of mine, but I worked on a show when I Channel Five, Sunny Fox. Oh my! Wonderama, and he was ninety nine years old. Yeah, many Christmas. But See, all... we're, we are we are children at this point right now. I think we can go into our nineties with with plenty of vim and vigor. I know we can go in our 90s. Uh, the vim and vigor, I'm not sure. Oh, come on. <laughs> I, I, I think if, if I could just sit in my chair and talk. That's nice. That's nice. But I, but I were, I were, yeah. The other thing that's happening, of course, is the stock market. Now, um, I'm in the stock market, 
And I like being in the stock market because I like to invest in American companies and international companies for that matter. I like to invest in business. And um, we started, I started to bow out of the stock market uh, about middle of the month. I'd made the money that I wanted and decided to start to bow out. So pretty well sold most of everything. Well, it's interesting because I also am part of Robin Hood and I'm also reading the threads on this uh, Wall Street um, um, group. And uh, it's really interesting what's going on with the millennials deciding to really go up against the hedge funds people. And um, it's interesting, they're, they're very angry, extremely angry at hedge fund people. They, they are recalling what happened in 2008 where, uh, for example, one gentleman had his, his mom's house almost taken away because the hedge fund had done something with the bank, blah, 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 whatever the case may be. But they're very angry, very angry about things. And of course, they're now particularly angry when uh, Robinhood, that's the trading uh, app that everybody has been on, uh, decided to suspend GameStop. Now, GameStop, <laughs> of course, I did not invest in GameStop. And I'll tell you the reason I did not invest in GameStop. When we were doing the handyman business, we got a phone call from a GameStop uh, corporate who said, you need to go to GameStop and we need to have some, some work done. Of course, this is when we were doing our handyman business. It, they pointed us, we got to the, to the, to the store, and they pointed us to the back room. And you can tell a lot about the back room and how things are run. It looked like there'd been a frat party back there. <laughs> it had not gone well at all. We had to finally turn down the job because it was so stinky that we finally said, we're really sorry, but we can't do this. And corporate said, what do you mean? What's going on? And I described it. There was this dead silence. And this woman went, oh, my Lord, really? And I said, yes, really? Yes. She said, okay, I'll take care of it. So on that basis, we were not, <laughs> was not interested in investing in game stock, stock. But of course, it was interesting seeing the, um, uh, the patter back and forth on, um, on Robin Hood and on Reddit uh, about GameStop. And they're using GameStop uh, to basically flush out the hedge fund people that they feel have taken advantage of the little guy. And um, I, I must say, I'm, I'm kind of cheering on the little guy. <laughs> I think it's, it's okay. You realize that hedge funds can go ahead and uh, put their claws onto 140% of the available stock of a company. And as a result, they can do some really horrible damage to a company, um, whether it's well run or not well run. And uh, what's happening at this point is as these stocks are being uh, bid up, these hedge fund people are having to ante up. So once again, it's like Las Vegas, you got to ante up. So suddenly this stock that had gone from $5 a share is up into the three, the four, the five, the 600. They, the hedge funds have to come up with it. And who is coming up with the extra money? Well, there's a guy that bought the Mets and he had to come up with $3 billion to keep this one hedge fund uh, from going bankrupt. And a lot of these multi-billionaires are doing exactly that, trying to keep these hedge funds going. So there's a big debate now between the little guy with the Robin Hood people and the big hedge fund folks. Well, so, uh, th th that, that goes back to my uh, our conversation of a few weeks ago, is yeah. that you have to have a balance between big business and government control because the big business has the money and if they're not regulated, they will, for whatever reason, I think it's this human nature. Uh, it's human nature. Yeah, it, th they will take advantage of the little guy. And, you need, and that's where government steps in. Government does not control the business per se, but it controls what big business can do. Well, and it's interesting the, that, the that the hedge, it's interesting that the hedge funds, once again, They've been, they have been able to run wild uh, for decades. And especially when you're able to get your claws on 140% of a company's stock. Now keep in mind, a company would issue say, let's do an example, a million shares of stock. And the company, the hedge funds could come in 
and the the million dollars, the million shares of stock um, are dispersed among various brokers who actually work on Wall Street and are able to trade and what have you. What the hedge funds were able to do was to go ahead and maybe one broker had uh, 100,000 uh, shares of this particular company. They're able to get 140%. They're able to put their claws on 140% of those shares of stock so that people cannot buy them. The difference though is, is that at this point that as the share price starts to go up, these short sellers are now having to come up with the difference. And I'll tell you, that's a lot of money. <laughs> it's a lot but, of- but, but, uh, as, as you're talking, I was thinking of this movie, The Producers. Have you yes. ever seen that with Zero Mustel? Yes, and, great movie. And, and Gene Wilder, where yes. uh, uh, Zero Mustel is a, a <laughs> producer who he sort of like romances older women to get yes. them to invest in his plays. And Gene, yes. Gene Wilder comes in as his accountant, a very meek guy. Mm -hmm. But what happened, they come up with a concept. Uh, he says, well, now this is a Gene Wilder. If you sell 140% of the play or 150% of the play and the play flops, nobody knows anything. So they go out and they try to uh, find the worst play yes. in the world. And I think it turns out to be Hitler and springtime in Germany. Yes, springtime for Hitler, yes. Springtime for Hitler in Germany. And uh, this, I mean, there, there's songs with the Gestapo coming in. Awful. And dances and it's supposed to be awful. Of course, when it hits Broadway, they think it's a great success because they think yes. it's a comedy. Yes. And they wind up in jail. But this reminds me of, uh, you know, True. selling more than you own. Yeah. Well, it's funny. It's very, because one of the things that I do a lot of reading, and especially now I do a lot of reading, great book to read here. This is a great book. It's called, called about the psychology of money. And you can talk about doing the mathematics of this and mathematics of that, but it ultimately comes down to people. And it comes down to a lot of the emotional buying and selling that takes place. And once again, with these, uh, these millennial buyers that are going on, it's a revenge play. It's a, a people's revenge play. And I think that, uh, and I don't wanna necessarily you know, bring this out, but I will. I think that uh, President Trump actually opened up part of that uh, feeling of, uh, he opened the eyes of folks saying that they actually could do something a little bit different rather than listening to, uh, to people um, that have a separate set of rules that uh, normal people don't have. And uh, that certainly is the case with the hedge funds. The hedge funds have done some unbelievable damage to companies. And um, these young people coming in with the money, I'll tell you, they're, they're, going, they're going for broke. They are going for broke at this point right now. It's, it's a fascinating, fascinating look at, uh, at how things have changed. And well, they have I, yeah, I, I divested myself of all stocks. I, I, uh, I am still recovering from the, uh, the, the stock market crash from, I think it's 2008, 2009. Yeah. Uh, that, that's, that sort of wiped me out. Well, that, uh, that was partially caused by, but by the banks, obviously. But I remember I worked for Bank of America and I was watching this start to unfold. Bank of America got involved with stocks with Merrill Lynch. They wanted to buy Merrill Lynch to increase their bottom line. And at the time that you start doing something like that, when you mix uh, commercial lending, residential lending that has an actual entity that you can put uh, your, your money against, a house, for example, or a, a commercial building, when you start to mix that with stocks, uh, it gets to be a real problem. And I exited Bank of America in uh, 2002, 2003 to start up my own company, Great Western Capital, with my late husband, yeah. Tom. And uh, we watched this. In fact, we were approached of all things because we did, I mentioned to you, we did forensic auditing uh, because I was a licensed private investigator at the time. And we were approached by investors who wanted to get into the Bernie Madoff thing. And if you took a look at the Bernie Madoff situation, um, we gave thumbs, thumbs down on it. Of course, the investors were very upset with us because they said, well, we get incredible rates of return and et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. We said uh, it, it, it doesn't exist. For example, there was a, um, an investment we were ac actually looking at um, uh, with Bertie Madoff's group, um, a rice farm in uh, South Carolina of all places. And when you looked at the actual financials, 
they said they only had X number of people working for it. Well, each one of those X number of people were going to be making well over a million dollars in salary. Now, what kind of sense does that make? <laughs> it didn't. So at that point, we said, not a good investment, folks. You got to listen to the numbers. You got to listen to your logic and back away from it. But I, 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 I should have known the company. I would have worked in the rice fields. <laughs> a million dollars, hell. <laughs> I'll tell you, <laughs> it was, it was. But, but for, the, for the life of me, I don't know. I don't understand the stock market. I don't understand why. I think the last I heard before the show, I think it was down 500. Yesterday, yeah. it was up 500. The day before, yeah. it was down 500. Yeah. Uh, the only way I could see is investing in the stock markets if you have enough money to lose. It's sort of like going to Vegas. You, you, have, you, know, you have a certain amount of uh, money in your pocket. You know, okay, I'm going to bet uh, I have $1,000 to bet or 2000 or 500 When you reach the limit, you go out. But this mm -hmm. is what I could afford to lose for entertainment. Yeah. I know people who have their life savings in the stock market. And I, and, yes. and I read it every day. And uh, by the time... You know, the market's over. They've died of a heart attack or a yeah. stroke. Yeah. Because it's right. so volatile. No, you have to be very disciplined about it. And uh, you have to have an exit strategy. And you have to be very unemotional about it. Um, there, we, we did okay. Not not great. I mean, we certainly didn't make enough to be, to be able to, you know, go to, you know, Barbados or something, yeah. you know, and retire like that. But um you have to be very disciplined about it, very unemotional. You have to have an idea as to which company is really going to be, you know, doing, you know, in terms of the trends, for example, with the COVID trend, everybody was going home. So I did invest in Zoom, which we're on right now. Yeah. I did invest in Zoom and uh, did okay. Not great, but I did certainly okay. I'm certainly not greedy. Um, invested in some other at-home stocks that did okay. And uh, once again, you just you can't be greedy. You just have to, when it reaches a certain point, you simply sell out and you just, you know. Or, 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 or what you do is uh, there's a way of taking out your profits, leaving, Absolutely. leaving, leave, leaving the uh, initial investment there mm -hmm. and taking out your, or your profits or taking out your initial investment and That's playing with your profit. It's that's like, what I do. That's what I Vegas, do. In Vegas, it's called, you know, playing with the house money. That's right. And that's right. That's exactly what I'm doing right now is I'm playing with the house's money. So if I end up losing it, that's that's perfectly fine. That's well, perfectly fine. What did I say? I, I, what, what I'd like to do eventually, as I say, with this show and without mm -hmm. talking politics, but sure. having you as a lifestyle uh, uh, reporter and... Oh. And, and we talk about what's happening. I mean, it's, it's a new world out there. It's a, a new world. Uh, and and what, what I'd love if you talking to the millennials and talking about what they're thinking of or the new, I, how old is the millennial? Uh, 22 to 34, I believe, or it could be to 36. So my kids are millennials. And, and yeah. talking to them and saying, also there's a whole new crop coming up, the college students. Absolutely. I don't know what the hell they're called now. I don't know, but it was funny because when we did our presentation to uh, the marketing director at uh, the uh, at the Haywood Mall, she looked at the artwork that Fish had because we brought a couple of frames, and she immediately, immediately got it. And it's very interesting because the millennials millennials get Fish footage; they understand, they look at it, they get it immediately. I must say, people our age haven't got a clue; they don't, they don't get it. And um, it's, it's interesting because millennials will go ahead and buy it immediately because they understand it. Once again, it's urban abstract art and it's looking down and taking interesting um, uh, shots of things like crosswalks and um, anything on the ground. Really very interesting stuff. I'll, I'll show it, maybe yeah. next week we'll show it. But it's funny because people our age don't get it. And it takes three or four or five times for them to come to the gallery and go, oh, 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 okay. That makes that makes perfect sense. But I have to take my hat off to you. We talked about this earlier. It's a great time to be getting old because I have to tell you at this point, you coming on the air and talking to people the way you're talking to people about interesting things and it's just ordinary types of things, but things about our lives and things about situations and the times that we're in. 
you're using Zoom. And I mean, this is a brand new technology that many people our age, Malcolm, are afraid to do. I found it astonishing that people do not um, applaud and do not want to uh, embrace technology like this because it opens up so many avenues. We couldn't have done this. What, Zoom has been around for what, two years, three years? I think, I think more, but I, I don't know. I, I've, he I've heard it. But the thing is, what, what I like is I've been in communications. I've been yep. uh, you know, in advertising, I've been in radio, I've been in television. Mm -hmm. And I always, I always had to report to someone. Yeah. You know, whether, whether it be, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the executive, the, the sales manager, the group sales manager, the, the president. Yep. Now I don't have to report to anyone. I can be creative. You know, I can get people that I like and I talk to them like, you know, like, like we talk. Yeah. Uh, of, of course, right now I'm not making any money out of it, but who knows? It's still an early yeah. year. And, and it, it also keeps you young. It keeps your, your yeah. mind flowing. This, this, is, this let me survive during the last year. Yes. Because here I am. I, I have several shows on you know, MalcolmPresents.com. Yeah. I'm talking to you in South Carolina. I'm yes. talking to Maxine in uh, uh, Quag, New York. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm talking to uh, people in, in Beverly Hills. I'm mm -hmm. talking to people from all over. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? Talking to people and having them tell their story is fascinating. That's one of the reasons I love, love, and I still love being a news reporter is talking to people about their story and how they were able to cope, how they're able to cope with things, how they're evolving um, everyday life. It's, it's really fascinating because people are just interesting, yeah. <laughs> really interesting. Well, as I say, this is what we're going, I think, to uh, integrate our, our show to us, especially once you get with fish in the malls because we're gonna to speak to people of all, all walks and we'll talk to them and you being the reporter, you can ask them you know, you know, certain questions. It yeah, could yeah. Have, the, the, the background would be the art. And I want to, actually, I want to do a separate show with, with Fish talking about art because uh, at, at one time I, I thought I'd be a photographer, but I, oh, I, really? love, yeah, I love black and white. Oh my gosh, he loves black and whites too. What I, uh, he has a great collection of black and whites. I love black and white because of the coloring, not yeah. the coloring, but the the, the shadows. Yep. The, you know, because when I, I used to print my own shots, and when you dodge and you you know burn, and it, it was like magic when I put it in the solution, and all of a sudden the picture would come up, which I yeah. never liked. I never liked color because mm -hmm. color there was say, oh, that looks almost real. Yeah. It didn't give you emotion. It, it, it sort of like imitated nature. I wanted to make a statement. And I never yeah. liked pretty pictures. Yeah. I liked, I, I would like going when I lived in Manhattan, I took pictures of slums. I took Perfect. pictures of, of empty yards. I took pictures of dilapidated buildings. Yep. Perfect. For some reason, because that meant something. It does. Because it's, it's the human, it's the human condition. Yeah. It's the condition. And uh, it's funny because that's one of the reasons that his, fish footage art has been so popular because once again, he's looking down. Everybody looks up. Everybody looks sideways or looks up. He always looks down. And it's fascinating to see the composition he comes up with, the textures he comes up with on very simple things. He'll go into a parking lot, for example, and it's the most god awful parking lot you've ever seen. But what he sees, and he's quite the artist, he puts together the textures and the composition that's almost along the lines of a Diepenbach, um, the 1950s uh, abstract artist, but because it's a little bit different because abstract artists, the problem with that is, hey, I, I can do that. But with his art, he puts his work boots. He's, a, he's been a handyman for years and years. Prior to that, he was in the theater as, as a, a technical advisor in the theater, also as a professor. And um, he puts his work boots, which are red, um, like I see them out there right now, on his work boots, his old work books, the, the, the tips of his work boots. And people look at the tips of his work boots. And the, the message is, it's an everyman message. Every. Looking at everyday things that suddenly come into being classic art. And they are sidewalks. They're 
crummy asphalt, their old parking lots, that whole combination. It's, 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 it's just fascinating. It has quite an eye, I must say. Well, the thing that I, 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 I've been a runner for years now, mainly walking, but for probably for about 30, 40 years, I, I go out in the morning where I used to run, whether it be Central Park, whether it be uh, Hollywood Reservoir, whether it be mm -hmm. Mulholland Drive. But the thing that I always or doing the, just walking, running, walking the streets, mm -hmm. there are things that. For whatever reason that you miss when you're not out on the street, yes. when, when you're yes. driving and you, you can go through the neighborhood for years, you go out on the street and you walk. Yep. And you look yep. around you, you know, stop thinking okay. about other things or get off the yep. phone. Look, yep. ar look around you and all of a sudden you say, I never saw that before. How long has it been there? Right. I mean, like you say, you're talking about fish cracks on the street. Yeah. Where you go, what, 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 I, what I see is, uh, especially over here and I live in the San Fernando Valley, you look at the cracks and they're not really cracks in the cement. What they are is they're roots of trees trying yes. to free themselves. And it gives yes. you, and then you look at the tree and you say, son of, me, son of a bitch, that tree is fighting to be alive. That's right. That's right. That's right. And you have a deep appreciation for the simple things in life. And the simple things in life are very complex yeah. as it turns out. Yeah. And you can have just deep appreciation for those simple things. Uh, I, I, yeah. So much to your life. It's yeah. just remarkable. I, I, I think, I don't know if we talked about it on this show or, or another mm -hmm. show that I have. Uh, I, I love there are certain trees well, that either are by the, the seashore. Yeah. That you see are all twisted and gnarled mm -hmm. from the wind, but yet yes. they're survivors. Yes. I mean, we yes. were talking about trees, that, you know, the, the other show, but they yes. survived. Yes. And and you see and and, and they're, they they sort of remind me like of old people that you see walking that, that are all gnarled and their fingers are you know are curled up, but they're mm -hmm. survivors. Yes, they and are. Can you imagine what they've seen in there? Again, right. what, what what I like and we're again I think we we're talking about this. There's mm -hmm. certain people, and I think you're one of them, that mm -hmm. you look into their eyes and there's wonderment. Mm -hmm. there, there, there's the world is ahead no matter how old they are. Yes. There are other people that you look into their eyes and they say, yeah, I've been there, done that. Life yeah. is boring. They don't, <laughs> they don't appreciate the little things. But talking about little things, it's time to say yeah. goodbye. Can you imagine? We, oh, we've been my there. goodness gracious. That, that was a very fast 30 minutes, young man. Well, again, I think we're once we talk about life in general versus any particular situation, the conversation goes freely. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are a lot of things to talk that we disagree on, but there's so many things that we talk we agree up, that we agree upon, which is life in general. Absolutely. And Absolutely. But anyway, speak to fish again. I'd, I'd love to, or speak to your people at the, at the mall. Okay. Tell them this is, you know, would they, would they be like the idea, which of course is a promotion for them. Sure. And and we also then can feature you know fish's work but i'd like to do a, a, a fish fest just let's see what we let's see what we can do uh, we should do a little bit of testing and see exactly how we can do it before we put it actually on the air well we can put it on the air we don't have to do any testing no. not, <laughs> uh, th 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 that, that's the old way of doing it. <laughs> th th this is a you know let's let's build a kite yes fly it if it doesn't fly, we'll knock it down. Okay, yeah. I sure mean, enough. We, I mean, we could have uh, uh, one, one station, one Zoomcast, uh, you know, saying, this is all new things we're trying. If you like it, let us know. If you don't like it, don't <laughs> let us know. <laughs> and we can keep on trying different things because again, I have the time, I don't know about you. We got the time. Yeah. That's the beauty of things, isn't it? Yeah, and, and we could put this on if you say, okay, uh, I, I have a busy day today. Okay, Deborah, what are you doing seven o'clock in the morning? <laughs> and and your, yes. body, your body gets used to things like that. I mean, when I when yes. I did my running and I was having a regular job, yeah, I was up four, 4.30. You bet. Putting my shoes on, 
doing my running, going to the gym, be back in the house at seven o'clock, take a shower and go to work. Absolutely. When I was doing a news reporting, absolutely. I always ended up pulling the morning shift. The right. morning shift was basically four o'clock in the morning. Okay. Right. And, and, and you never think whether you're doing or not. Do I want to go to work and get out of bed? No, I don't want to get out of bed. It's comfortable here and it's cold outside. That's what I was <laughs> But you don't think about it. Anyway, on that note, next Friday. That sounds wonderful. 12 o'clock. Send my left to fish. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye now. <laughs>